Hi everybody, we are going to be making honeycomb today. Um, so I'm going to do a little video, obviously, um, about a mixture that we can make at home in the kitchen. As you can see, I'm wearing my protective gear, my apron. Now this experiment actually does have some hazards involved. We're using sugar and we're heating it up to quite a high temperature. If you're heating it to a high temperature, that means that it could bubble and it could splatter, which means you could burn yourself. So this is not an experiment that I would do at home unless you have parent supervision. Okay, so in a small saucepan, you're going to add sugar. There's three quarters of a cup. There's a quarter of a cup of water and then there's one tablespoon of golden syrup. We're just going to mix that to start off with. Make sure that you do this in a small saucepan. You don't want to use something too big, otherwise the entire bottom will just burn. Okay, now we're going to turn our heat on. We're going to turn it to a relatively high heat because we do want it to get to the boil, but not too high because we don't want to get it to the boil yet. We want to dissolve our sugar first. So we're going to stir this until all of our sugar is completely dissolved. We know that sugar is a soluble substance, which means it does dissolve. Our solvent in this case is water, just like we did in our salt experiment. My sugar is almost completely dissolved, so I'm going to turn the temperature up. Once it is completely dissolved, we stop stirring and we just let it boil. Now I would suggest for this experiment that you do have an exhaust fan on because if you burn the sugar it will smoke um, and it will cause quite a bit of uh, blackening on your saucepan as well. So make sure you put the fan on. If it starts to smell like it's burning take it off the heat immediately um, and my suggestion would be that you take it outside where it's not going to set off the fire alarm and fill it up with water. I will show you an experiment gone wrong after we finish this. All right, so my mixture has been going for eight minutes now and it's looking really good. It's not too brown. It's looking a really nice golden brown and it smells really delicious. Now from here, you need to have a spoon ready you need to have some baking paper on a tray ready and you need to have some sifted bicarb soda. As you can see, I've got there. So we add the bicarb soda and then we stir away. Now this is going to happen very quickly once we add it in. We need to do it straight away. We need to stir straight away and then we're going to tip it into our tray. If you don't do this, it'll go hard in your pot and it will be very hard to get out. Here we go. See it's starting to bubble up when I'm mixing it and it's going this really nice fluffy color. I mix, I mix, I mix. Then once I think I've mixed it all in, I'm going to, there it is, put it onto my tray. Now, as I said, it's going to go hard pretty quickly. So you need to work pretty fast right now to get it all out. Here we go, you can see it's very sticky and you can see how hard it's going. All 
All right, we'll just have a look in here. You can see it's a really light color and it wasn't before. That's the bicarb soda reaction. It changes the color. Now you can see that the bits down here are still quite hot, so they're not fully sticky, but that will go perfectly hard. So my suggestion is you fill this pot up straight away with hot water so that it doesn't all stick there. Otherwise, as you can see, very hard to clean. Now just to show you what it looks like when you screw it up, this is the color of it when it's burnt. Now it looks black compared to this beautiful color over here where it is yellow. Now what I've done here is I've used too big a pot. When you use too big a pot, it'll end up being too spread out and so it heats up much faster and it burns. So you need to keep your eye on the temperature. If it looks like it's going too dark, you just turn the temperature down. Now as you can see here, this is a liquid, it doesn't look like what it used to. I've actually added water in because if you don't add water in straight away, if you've messed it up, it will be burnt to the bottom. But I've added water straight away and what that means, it'll be much easier to clean. Once you've let your honeycomb cool, it should on top feel rock hard and it shouldn't be, feel hot at all. Mine still feels hot, but some of the smaller pieces don't feel hot anymore like this piece I have in my hand. Now, once it's cooled down enough, you should be able to just break it and it makes that nice sound. And you can look here, it just looks like honeycomb. So now I've finished making my honeycomb. It is really delicious. It is a really nice golden brown color. If yours, if you try and make it home and yours is a darker color, it's probably because you've overcooked your um, mixture and that means that it's burnt a little bit. So you might be able to taste that burnt flavor a little bit. Now with honeycomb, it actually is really interesting. If it's open air and it gets oxygen in it, it starts to go really soft and funny. So you do need to keep honeycomb in a locked container or like they sell it in shops, you cover it with chocolate. So I hope you enjoyed this experiment, it was a bit of fun. Um, if you have parent consent and you have supervision, you may try this at home. Remember that there's some hazards involved, it is hot, you may have smoke if you burn it, you may burn the bottom of pans, you have to be really careful about the temperature. If it looks like it's too hot and it's smoking, you need to turn it down and take it off the temperature um, and then hopefully um, start again. If you burn it, there's no going back. You can't do anything else. You've got to start the experiment again. So hope you've enjoyed today's science. See you later.